Hey everyone, this is the March 2020 LEGO Gift with Purchase, a set that they will just give you if you buy a certain amount of other stuff. It's just a steam train. It's a big nostalgia hit for people who are older, quite rather older than probably the average LEGO uh, fan of today. But they call it a 40 year anniversary set, which is kind of an awkward thing. 40 year anniversary of what? 40 year anniversary of the original version of this thing that they've made a new version of. More on that later. First, let's take a closer look. This is the entirety of the set, and they really didn't cut any corners with this for what it's trying to be. They even included the stand here, which has a nice little plaque for its commemoration. The stickers in the set, yes, it does use stickers just like the original did from 1980. But in this set, they have a metallic back, and it's a, a chrome metallic back, so you can see how that's just a, a very, very shiny piece there. Anywhere it's not showing up as black, it's very shiny indeed, and it just makes it a little extra special. But it does make it a little bit more difficult to see the stickers and what's on them if the light isn't hitting it just right. You can remove the locomotive from this base very easily. It also comes with that, that uh, neo-classic, if you will, minifigure. We'll take a closer look at that as well. But, you know, the base is basic. There you can see the other sticker. When Again, the light hits it just right. You can see it very, very clearly what it shows. But if it's not hitting it just right, then <laughs> look at that. It starts to actually disappear but it's nice that they included this for people who want to bring a little extra prestige to the presentation of this overall this looks so very much like the original push along steam train from 1980 that they're trying to replicate it has the exact same proportions and everything it's got the three axles a lot of the pieces that were available back then for trains in particular are not made anymore and they've made very nice substitutes for those like the buffers back here that's actually a technique that i've not seen lego use before they have the technic pin inside of there and it's just barely sticking through a modified two by two round tile with the pin hole in the middle or a stud hole or anti-stud hole in the middle and it works really well like the proportions are very good the positioning of everything is good they don't have the magnet couplers anymore but they have the spots to connect them or the suggestion of spots to connect them and they also didn't have the benefit of the main chassis piece which was a specialized piece that lego used in red or black in many different models for quite some time both steam and diesel or diesel uh, electric looking ones but instead they just used bricks and plates to make something that is the exact same size again the same proportions and this works just fine especially using it was very important to use the red version of the modern uh, power function era wheels with the nice tires on them, the almost clear tires, which give it extra traction. If you actually use those on a, a power functions motor base, these do actually turn. It does actually fit onto real tracks, any kind of tracks. And if you can hook this up with your own couplers at the front and back, or at least at one end, you can actually get this to go around a train layout. By default of course it's a push along so you have to push it along but you can put a tender behind here and put a motor in that if you want it even has the opening at the back just like the original one did which was to allow the wires to go through so when this came out was the year when they had both 12 volt and 4.8 volt systems on the market at the, the exact same time they had just come out with the new gray tracks for the very first time with the new uh, uh, 12 volt uh, system where they, they would put extra metal parts in the middle so you could just have your own train track with no ele no electricity no electrical power whatsoever or you could add on those extra pieces and then add the power through center rails it had two extra rails that were metal in the middle and if you didn't want to do that you could go with the 4.5 volt system which had a different motor that you would just fit right here and then you would have the battery in a battery box behind as the tender so this whole opening long way to say this whole opening is to allow the wires to go through for that for the connection to the battery and you can also see a, a nice sticker inside of there for some controls you can put a figure in the, the cab area these windows are the modern type of course they're very different from the old ones but other than that i mean most of this is just a good representation of the original so for folks who have been into the lego hobby for that long 
This has got to be a fantastic nostalgia hit. Oh, that sticker is different. It used to be over multiple parts, which is a very illegal technique nowadays. But fortunately, they have a taller brick, which is the one by two by uh, two. Yeah, just one by two by two. And they just elevated it up and the sticker just fits over that. Also doesn't have the old DB logo on it anymore. They just use the modern train logo because they have to. I don't think they have the, the DB uh, license anymore. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the train or the locomotive, I should say. And then the minifigure is almost a perfect replica of the original train engineer minifig that they had also available in 1980. No printing around the back. What appears to be just a single color white printing on the front of the torso. However, that is not just a single color of white. There's a a completely unexpected and super, super, super subtle difference between this figure's printing and the original. The white is actually outlined by blue. There is blue printed around the white. You can just barely, barely make it out, but it's there. It's unexpected. It's not a bad thing by any means, but it at least serves to definitively distinguish this from a genuine classic original. There are also other little things you can look at, you know, small details that will allow you to pick this out from, you know, from a real original. Uh, if anybody tries to sell you one of these as a vintage one, you know, after throwing it through the dryer or something to try to get it worn, worn out, it's easy to pick it out. But just that, that small difference in the, the process of printing it, I just found interesting. It's a pretty simple set, so there aren't many leftover pieces. And there's a look at the spent sticker sheet so you can see how many stickers were actually used in the whole thing. Now, I'm not going to talk about value with this because, again, it's a gift with purchase. In the U.S., you had to buy at least $100 U.S. worth of, of stuff in order to get this. But I don't know. I might be a little bit biased on this by the way that I look at gifts with purchase from Lego in particular because I never go to the Lego store and buy stuff just to get a gift with purchase. Uh, you know, on, on day one, you can always, at the, at the very least, find these on eBay, you know, from people that went to the store to get the gift with purchase just to sell it, or who went to the store to get stuff and didn't care about the gift with purchase that much and just put it up for sale. And you can pay a lot less than the the threshold amount, you know, if you just want the thing. So I never personally look at it from the perspective of, you know, they're, they're tricking you. They're, they're, they're forcing you to buy a certain amount of stuff that you don't want in order to get that. I just see it as a bonus. That's just my view. Not everybody's going to have that same perspective. Some people will look at it from the perspective of that is the thing that I want. So having to buy the other stuff is, you know, an, an additional burden on me. I just, I'm not able to empathize with that. So I, I can't really speak to that that mindset that well. Not that there's anything wrong with that, just pointing out where I'm coming from. I do want to talk a little bit though about the weirdness of that. The 40 year thing, that, that, the existence of this set on, on the whole. Again, what it what has been going on for 40 years? It's been 40 years since they made this set. It's been 40 years since they came out with the gray tracks to replace the blue tracks and allow the 12 volt thing to to work you know the the introduction of the wide introduction of the 12 volt system but there were trains for a lot longer than that trains have been around lego has been making trains for a lot longer than 40 years that's for dang sure a lot longer so i don't and even with the same gauge this you know that are that are compatible the, the blue tracks were just phased out in 1980 40 years ago uh, they had a whole series of them, so I don't know what this is commemorating, really. 40 years of what? They're trying to make it seem like 40 years of trains? No. 40 years of steam trains? Definitely not. I don't know. So as far as I'm concerned, it's 40 years since that particular train came out, or maybe you could say 40 years since the introduction of powered rails to LEGO, which is kind of ironic to celebrate now, when we don't have powered rails anymore, those were discontinued a long time ago. I don't know. I don't know what that's all about. I don't know what their, their thinking is with that. They, in building, they probably have some rationale for it that probably in the rest of the world doesn't matter. 
Anyway, it's a pretty cool little thing. I like having it. I will probably put it in my layout somewhere eventually with my 1985 little steam train, which was basically from the same series, but actually has the 4.5 volt motor system in it, not, not 12 volt, even though it was later on. And uh, yeah, just enjoy it for what it is. A little, a little blast from the past in a way, but made with modern parts and available for free, unless you see it as Lego forcing you to buy $100 worth of stuff to get this thing. That's it for my look at this set though. If you want to see the build for it, I've got the pure build, which is in real time with no music, just the sounds of putting the pieces together. I've got the speed build with a little bit of calm music and the same process just sped up and goes by in just a handful of minutes. Check out one of those if you want to, and I'll talk to you again soon.